Let's travel to the distant future, to the year 3000. People have used up the Earth's natural resources, and there's nothing left for us here on our planet. People need a new habitat, and the Moon is the closest celestial body to planet Earth. About 249,000 miles, or 400,000 kilometers, and we are there. Today, the Moon is the only cosmic object which humans have set foot on. So, how many people could fit on the Moon if it became a new home for all of humanity? A million? A billion? Maybe a trillion? Soon you'll know the answer. Let's imagine that the population density on the Moon would be the same as the population density of our planet. In this case, the Moon with an area of 409 million square feet or 38 million square meters can fit about 2 billion people. But people on our planet are unevenly distributed and population density varies by location. If the Moon were to be as densely populated as Monaco, then as many as 700 billion people could live on it. This is 90 times more than the current population of the Earth. In comparison with the most sparsely populated Mongolia, the Moon could become home to only 76 million people. This is the population of France and Switzerland combined. It turns out that the area of the Moon is quite enough to make it a reserve springboard for humanity. But will people be comfortable there? The Moon experiences incredibly extreme temperature fluctuations. From minus 280 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 173 degrees Celsius at night to 260 degrees Fahrenheit or 127 degrees Celsius during the day. It all depends on which side is illuminated by the Sun. The atmosphere of the Moon is very thin, therefore it cannot retain heat to evenly distribute across its surface. Also, as one day on the Moon lasts 27 Earth days, 13.5 days on the Moon are incredibly hot, followed by another 13.5 days of extreme cold. Additionally, the Moon doesn't have a magnetic field and is exposed to all kinds of cosmic threats, solar winds, high radiation, rains of micrometeorites. These are just a small sample of the atmospheric features on our natural satellite. Being in a solar storm on the Moon is like standing in the beam of a charged particle accelerator. In order for people to survive under such conditions, a lunar habitat must be very strong and airtight. It will have to be cool during lunar days and heated during lunar nights. To protect against radiation, additional shields will be required. At first, air will have to be brought to the Moon from Earth, but sooner or later there'll be a need to produce oxygen on the Moon. If you imagine that the population on the Moon will grow to tens of thousands, then oxygen must be synthesized on the Moon. This will depend directly on the growth of space research. This is due to the fact that oxygen is required to launch spacecraft, and if demand grows, then building oxygen generators for rocket fuel on the Moon will become economical, or so says astronomer Marcus Landgraf of the European Space Agency. Moreover, scientists already have a proven technology for oxygen production directly from the lunar soil, called regolith. It turns out that moon dust contains approximately 40 to 50 percent oxygen that can be released when exposed to electric current. During the experiment to obtain oxygen from the lunar soil, it turned out that from three tons of regolith, you can get about a ton of oxygen. So, if the technology has already been developed in terrestrial conditions, the question of the future is the construction of automated plants on the Moon for the uninterrupted production and supply of oxygen to lunar inhabitants. But what about water? A few decades ago, researchers believed that water on the Moon is present only in the form of ice. But it turned out that this isn't so. Using data from the Chandrayaan-1 space probe, water on the Moon was found, you won't believe where, in stone. But this doesn't mean that we won't be able to use it. Since transporting water from Earth is expensive and difficult, for future lunar bases, a local source can be an invaluable aid in the development of the Moon. 
In the future, water will be extracted on the moon in the same way as minerals on Earth. But until people learn how to split moon craters, they'll have to develop closed life support systems and obtain water from vapors in the air and from urine and to release oxygen from the water for breathing. But this process will still result in some losses, which means that reserves should be replenished from time to time. Scientists believe that the colonization of the moon will depend on our ability to supply our satellite with hydrogen. Transporting this cargo will be extremely expensive, about $100,000 per pound, or about $220,000 per kilogram. This assumes, of course, that the Earth would still be a source of resources by then. In addition to water and air, people will also need food. Is farming on the moon possible? Yes, in closed ecosystems, harvesting from the lunar fields may well become a reality. Earlier this year, the China National Space Administration reported that they managed to germinate cotton seeds under lunar gravity. This is the first experiment to grow plants on the moon. Earlier, similar experiments in conditions of weak gravity and high radiation were unsuccessful. Chinese researchers believe that the cotton can be used for clothing and potatoes grown in the future can become a food source for the first colonizers. Professor Hie Hanxing, the developer of the experiment, said, we have a glimpse into the future of survival in space. If further planting of seeds of other crops are just as successful, one can forget about hunger on the moon. But even assuming that the moon can provide people with air, water, and food, the main problem will be the transportation of people from the Earth to its satellite. Private company Moon Express estimates the cost of a flight to the moon as part of an expedition at $10 million. The delivery of material from the surface of the Earth to space will cost an average of $9,000 per pound. That's about $20,000 per kilogram. According to experts, a well-designed elevator would reduce the cost of transporting goods to $45 per pound or about $100 per kilogram. The basic design of the space elevator will include a cable that extends from an anchor on the ground to a counterweight in space. Together with the cargo, a special lift will move up the cable into geostationary orbit due to centrifugal force. When lifting, the load will accelerate due to the rotation of the Earth, and this will allow it to easily overcome the gravity of our planet. The most difficult part of developing a space elevator is finding the right material for the cable that can withstand weather in the Earth's atmosphere, solar radiation, shocks from meteorites, and other space debris. The solution could be carbon nanotubes, hollow carbon tubes that are just a few nanometers wide, but a hundred times stronger than steel. The problem is that the maximum size of nanotubes today is 7.3 inches, or about 18 and a half centimeters, and the cable for the space elevator should be 21,748 miles, or 35,000 kilometers long. Instead of pulling a space elevator from Earth into orbit, American astrophysicists suggest throwing a cable from the moon. This space line will revolve around the Earth only once a month because it's tied to the moon and not to the Earth. In turn, this means less load coming from centrifugal forces. In addition, the space line can be built from existing materials. These are not some developments of the future, but those that already exist today, including carbon polymer xylon. The developers believe that such an elevator is the most realistic way to deploy a large lunar colony, as the line will become part of an infrastructure resembling an early railway. Despite the fact that the moon seems to be the most attractive option for colonization, we must admit that this is not the best idea. At the moment, the moon can only be considered as a future research center for studying the rest of our solar system. But if we want to consider the creation of a lunar home, then in the coming decades, it will be able to accommodate 
only a few thousand people and not millions or billions. In the meantime, the ideal planet for a future human colony has not yet been found. It's time for us to start taking care of the planet on which we live now. Write in the comments what you would like to do on the moon immediately after landing. Go golfing? Play some soccer? Perhaps a little hiking? Like this video and subscribe to our channel so you'll have a front row seat to our information flight through space. See you in a new orbit. Hold on tight.